Hey everybody, Sue here from She Sells. Uh, coming to you today from my swing on my back porch. This is what I call my beach room. It's kind of my place of solitude. It's a little noisy out here today. I can hear some birds and somebody mowing their grass. So hopefully you won't be able to hear all that in the background. Anyway, I wanted to come to you today and talk to you a little bit about Travel RA because I've had a lot of questions about it. And people wanting to know, you know, how do you know what to buy? How do you know where to go? Um, how do you make money doing that? And, you know, I, I've i never been on an RA trip where I didn't make money. And usually pretty good money. But I don't just say, hey, I think tomorrow I'm going to go to Charlotte or Jacksonville or wherever I go. I don't just say, hey, I think I'm going to go there and spend a couple days and looking around for stuff and see what I find and stay at a hotel and come back when I want to come back. I always have a purpose. And let me just start out by saying I probably was doing RA for a good part of a year before I really started to travel. Now, I live in the Atlanta area and we literally have, I live in the north part of Atlanta and I can go 50 miles to the south and 50 miles to the east maybe 10 miles to the west to get to all of Metro Atlanta. So it's a giant metro area and there's a lot of shopping to do here. So, I mean, sometimes if you wanna call it travel, I'll go 50, 55 miles, you know, south of here and do the whole Noonan and Peachtree City area and spend like all day down there. Now, I, I've never stayed like overnight just shopping in the Atlanta area, but I probably could. <laughs> um, Anyway, so, you know, I guess maybe nine, ten months. I, I can't tell you exactly when. I had been buying a, a an item at a wholesale club here in Atlanta. And we have about four or five of them. And I had pretty much gone to all of them and bought all they had. So I just had this thought in my head, hey, I wonder where the next closest wholesale club is to Atlanta. Or I didn't really want to drive like a hundred miles to go to one, but what area would have several of them? And I just looked it up on the map and Charlotte had several. And I, you know, had a SKU number or the name of the product and I called over there to a couple of them and they had, had a bunch of them. So I decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna drive over there. It's about a three and a half, four hour drive you know, shop the, that particular wholesale club, you get all I can. Um, now I did, I'm sure at that time, almost always at the beginning, would I process the, in the hotel at night and ship from that location? Because I, I was just driving the RAV4 and especially if it was a bigger item, it would pretty much fill up my car pretty quick. Um, so, I mean, there was a time I went to Augusta, Georgia with the Toys R Us going out of business and I really had planned to just fill up the car as much as possible, then drive over to Macon and spend the night, because I really didn't want to spend the night in, in a, I might have said Augusta, I meant Albany, Georgia. Um, but I got there, and after four or five hours, I had so much, I think I had five shopping carts full. And I went ahead and paid and filled up my car, and I decided, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon, I decided to check into a hotel empty my whole RAV and go back and fill it up again. And I, I did two and a half carfuls in the RAV and I literally stayed up most of the night processing and shipping out um, and bringing it all uh, to UPS in the morning. Uh, because I also found out that um, they were, uh, that there was a store in Tallahassee going out of business as well, and I decided to head for there because it was only a few hours further. Oh, I don't know, maybe four hours further. I did ask my husband ahead of time and say, Do you, would you rather me come home and then go back or just go straight down there? So I did. Um, but back to starting out, I actually am in the middle of cooking dinner and my timer's going off, so I am going to grab that and come back. See you in a second. Okay, so in case you're wondering, I'm making beef stroganoff, and now I have 13 minutes before the timer goes off again. I just want to try and get this done before the sun goes down, because it's starting to set right now, and I want to do this before it's not dark. Um, so back to the beginning. So the first time I went out to Charlotte and went to the wholesale clubs and bought what I wanted from there. But at that time, I was doing a lot of a Tuesday morning, I'm trying to think of some other stores, Walmarts and that kind of store. So I, I did you know, go to those stores as well. Not necessarily knowing exactly what I was looking for there, but you know, if they were on the way 
or if I still had more room left in the car, I went ahead and, you know, checked some of those out. Obviously not every Walmart or never, not every Tuesday morning. Because I think there was four of the Wholesale Club or maybe five there as well. And I think I got all of those. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, normally I have a plan. So I, I don't just say, oh, I'm, uh, I think I'll go to Charlotte next week. So there's something that I'm looking for, something that maybe I ran out of in Atlanta. And so my plan starts out with something specific that I'm going for. And then on top of that, you know, I go to the stores that I go to regularly here because pretty much I don't think I, I go to any stores in Atlanta that aren't other places. You know, there may be some sort of regional stores, but they're around the Southeast or whatever. Um, so I, you know, I start with a plan. I have maybe one item that I'm looking for, maybe 10, usually from a specific store. Um, in the spring, like February, March, this is another thing I do. I write down the sales. So the last three years in a row, I've gone to a specific store and I write down what date the sale started. Last year, I, I forgot to write down when it ended. It's kind of like one of these end of the season clearances. Like there are stores that go, you know, 50% after, after Christmas, then they go to 75, then they go to 90 off. Um, and there's kind of a pattern to it. And it's not necessarily like a specific date, but it might be, you know, the fifth Tuesday of the year, or it might be four times a year at these certain times of the year. So I try to write down in my calendar you know, I'll go a year ahead and say, start looking on this date for, for that specific sale that I did in, in February, I had written down in my calendar, like January 28th, start calling and checking on this sale. So I was calling every morning and asking, you know, are these particular items on sale yet? Uh, yeah, they, they were already on sale in January, but I wanted to wait until they were at their sort of peak sale price. And then I literally went I did Atlanta, I did Huntsville, Birmingham, Charlotte, uh, I feel like, oh, Chattanooga area. I feel like there might, might have been one more. But I kind of took my time doing it because I didn't realize that it was going to end as soon as it did end. So next year, I have written down the end date as well. And I'm going to do just one after another after another and try not to take any breaks in between so I could just kind of get the maximum purchase. And I also did run into a few other resellers this time. The year before, I don't think I saw any at that store. Um, and I mean, I, I talked about that one rude lady <laughs> at one of the stores. And the funny thing is, you know, she had said, I've been to all the Alabama stores already. And I was like, oh, crap. But I went to Alabama after that and I got plenty, plenty, plenty. So she obviously either wasn't buying as much as I bought or really didn't go or who knows. You know, that's, that's the other thing everybody talks about. Oh, there's so many resellers in my area. Well, I have found that the north side of Atlanta is, has quite a few resellers and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but there's certain places that I go on the south side of Atlanta that don't seem to be, you know, like even the Walmart after Christmas, I was able to find a good bit more on clearance there than up here. So sometimes you might have to drive, you know, like 30 miles to some other Walmarts or some other, you know, regional stores. Look for stores in your area that aren't all over the country because obviously Walmart and Target are everywhere in the country. And you have that slight advantage if it's just a regional area that, you know, maybe only one fourth of the country has that store. And so you are only competing against, you know, maybe one fourth of the resellers. Obviously the numbers aren't exact or whatever, but you know, you're maybe competing against less uh, resellers than at a store like Walmart and Target. So like I said, I, I start out with a specific reason, you know, to head somewhere. And you know, I, I do pay my gas and I do stay at a hotel and I tend to stay at a little bit more expensive hotel because my one requirement by my husband is that I have to stay at a hotel that doesn't have the outdoor doors because he feels like it's a little safer for me. So they tend to be, you know, more from the 70 to to $100 range or obviously up from there. This last trip when I went to Virginia, I spoiled myself a little bit. I stayed at the beach one night and I did stay, end up staying two nights at that brand new Hyatt place. But I used, I mean, I, I, I either use hotels.com 
which ends up being to me, you know, just a little bit more than if you go straight to the hotel website. But then you do end up getting, if you stay 10 nights, you get one free. So always look for the deals. If you don't mind staying in the hotel, the thing about using, um, like, not praise, like hot wire, is they don't tell you if it's a hotel with outside doors. or like That's not one of the categories you can check, that it has to have a lobby or something. So I don't tend to use hot wire. I have when like my husband or my kids are staying with me or something. Um, so I usually I use hotels.com or I use the Hyatt Place app. And I mean, some of the places are pretty reasonable. There's one I stay in in Charlotte that's around $90. It's always more on the weekend. So that's another thing. Look at the city where you're going. And since you don't necessarily have to go on a weekend, if you're a full-time reseller, look and see if the hotels are more expensive on the weekend or the weekday. Because sometimes a business area might be more expensive during the week. Uh, you know, you just never know, really. Um, just look at the pricing. I always check that. I always check whether Friday, Saturday night is cheaper. I tend to prefer to go during the week to re to shop because it's usually a little more crowded on the weekend, but if I have to go on the weekend, I, I will and I have. Um, so yeah, I, I spent a little bit more on this Virginia trip hotel-wise, but you know, I fill up my cooler with, you know, snack things like hummus and chips and cheese. And I really like those little snack packs that have cheese and nuts and like raisins or what, cranberries and stuff like that. And if you get them at the Wholesale Club, they're fairly inexpensive. And I mean, it doesn't look like there's much in there, but it really could fill you up. You, you eat, eat one of those in between stores and a couple crackers or an apple and it can last for hours and hours. Here's the thing, when I'm out shopping and I'm really finding the deals and that kind of thing, I, I'm hardly hungry. I mean, I can sometimes go hours and hours without eating. Now, I tend to not drink water enough, and man, I don't know what it is about being in those stores, but I, if I spend two, three hours in a store, I am just dying of thirst. So I try to, you know, have a lot of bottled water in the car with me, and I try to remember to drink it. And you could tell by some of my videos when I'm in the car and I've been sourcing for a couple hours, it's like I hardly have a voice because I'm just so dry. But anyway, you know, so I just really don't spend a whole lot on food. Most of the hotels I stay at tend to have free breakfast, so I'll just have my oatmeal and fruit and whatever, and even grab, you know, a yogurt for later in the day or a banana. And then I don't usually have lunch, but sometimes like by the second or third day, I, d I tend to do pretty short trips. My normal trips are two days. I'd say more two days than anything else, but sometimes I will go three, and I have gone a few times more than that. So usually by that third night, I want like a real meal and I'll, you know, go either to a restaurant and sit down and eat or bring something back to the hotel with me. Um, but so I really just don't spend a whole lot on meals. Um, so I think, I guess my big, biggest expense is the hotel. So really you just add that up. But if you're, you know, pulling in, um, I, I would say the very minimum a thousand dollars in profit, um, isn't really hard to do and you know what you're looking for but I would say you know I would say a good two-day trip is a couple thousand dollars so all right say I spent you know 200 on the trip you know do your numbers it's it's not that hard to say I've made a profit off of that um I will say this last trip to Virginia was a little bit different I Okay, that was the last interruption because we finished dinner and it was delicious. And I want to try and get this. I know it still looks pretty bright, but the sun's really going down. So I'm going to try and finish this up before the sun goes down. So that last trip I took to Virginia was really the longest trip I've ever taken. Probably mile-wise and uh, travel time. Maybe not mile-wise because I've gone down to Orlando several times. Uh, uh, so I'm not positive on that. But it was a good nine-hour drive out there. And I started a little late on the first day. I did the show and then I went out to breakfast with my husband and I packed the car, blah, blah, blah. It was, you know, a good lunchtime or a little later when I left uh, for Virginia. So I wanted to try and get as far as I could that first night. And I think I stayed in Burlington that first night. And I did run and, and do a couple stores there really quick before it got too late. And honestly, all I did was pay for my hotel that day. I found... Uh, 
an item at a wholesale club that I had been buying around all through Christmas and then they then they went on sale after Christmas and I found about 12 of those made like a hundred dollars hundred and twenty dollars I think um, so really the first day I just made enough to pay for that day and then the next three days I was really going up there to see a store that was not necessarily really going out of business but they're doing the remodeling and they've done all of them in Atlanta and I had found some good toys and a few items before they had remodeled here in Atlanta. And so that really was a little different for me. I really wasn't hunting a specific toy, but I was also doing some clothing items from Kohl's. Um, also looking at the wholesale clubs and seeing if they had any, you know, of that, those particular toys that I was selling at Christmas time. Because I have been finding them here and there on sale, you know, kind of just the leftovers. Um, <clears throat> so I that that trip was a little bit different for me um, and I'll tell you I'm not sure I mean I'm glad that I went because I got some good items I mean I got some really high ROI items but really not as many as I would have liked for how many days I was gone and then I had gone to Norfolk and I had gone to like Hampton I crossed over the river there and I went to Hampton and then my plan was to then continue on to Richmond and do all of Richmond and I had you know my plan to come home a little bit different way and do some stores on the way home but I just ended up spending the whole day in Hampton um, it was one of those times where I'd stop at a couple stores and really find nothing and say you know what never mind I'm just gonna shoot straight up to Richmond and start up there and then that next one I would find a good amount of stuff you know, again, not hundreds of items. I mean, at that one store in Hampton, I probably found six items, but literally was probably $150 in profit. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the rest of Hampton. And and then I, I had stopped at a Kohl's really late in the day on my way up to Richmond and ended up spending maybe two hours there, which wasn't common. And I'm usually kind of in and out. I know what I'm looking for. And they just had racks and racks and racks of you know, sports clothes and just different things. And so I ended up just spending a really long time there. Okay, so now I'm looking at my app and trying to decide where I'm gonna go stay in Richmond. And it, honestly, it wasn't that far away, but it was like, you know, if I do that a whole nother day and then start to drive home the next day, and it just, it just was taking longer and longer than I planned. And my husband was wanting me to come home. So I decided to, to go back and stay at the same hotel I stayed at in Hampton the night before, which was only 10 miles back, and then really just start to head home the next day and get home on Saturday instead of Sunday night. So I leave the next morning and I start heading home and I have this plan for, I think maybe five stores on the way home. And I was staying longer at each store. I was finding this store and that store. And then I had seen that sign. I talked about it already for Duluth Trading Company and my husband really likes that. And I thought, oh, like a factory outlet. Cause it's really, really expensive stuff. And it wasn't at all. It was just a little bit out of my way. And it was kind of neat to go there. And then, I, and then I did end up going to one Kohl's over there, which wasn't on my list. But man, when I was there, I probably saw five stores I would have loved to have run into. And that's, you know, always a problem. It's, do I stick with just my list? And I'm not very good at that. I tend to see, you know, I've just got to run in this store and see what they've got today. Um, but on the other hand, when you know a store really well, like I used to shop at Tuesday morning a couple years ago quite a bit, and I don't find much there at all anymore. But because I, I pop in there pretty regular and I know what's been around and I notice what's new, and I will find, you know, just one item here and there, um, but I can run in and out of there in 10 minutes tops and I I ran into a couple and I found I think I talked about it I think I talked about it in another video but I didn't tell you where it was but it's this Marvel collage puzzle and it's literally $4.99 and sells for about $33 and I've been selling those for a couple years and they just every once in a while come around again and uh, they've stayed pretty high up there um, all through the couple years they'll go up and down a little bit um, but you know, I found two of those and they had been around since December. Um, so, and they were in perfect, perfect condition, which a lot of times when stuff hangs around for a while, 
you know, it gets moved here and moved there and then it's, you know, not in very good shape. So I, I again, I bought maybe two bags of stuff and had, you know, a couple hundred dollars and I literally only spent 10 minutes in there. So that's one of the reasons that I say, sorry, it's getting kind of hot out here. One of the reasons that I say, um, you know, really get to know a store because if you happen to pass by one in a city where you're just on your way to or from somewhere, you can pop in and just grab a few items. So here's another type of, of RA that I do. Okay, I had to go out of town um, yesterday. No, let's see, today's Saturday. <laughs> Thursday, I left to go down to Florida. I had to pick up my son in Pensacola. It's about a five hour drive, five and a half hour drive. So I had my plan. I left um, after the show on Thursday. We, we did an early show. So I left about 9.30. And I had a plan on where to stop on the way down. And I think I pretty much stuck to my plan on the way down. And I, I didn't get to the last store, the one I wanted to go to in Pensacola, because I ended up getting there pretty late. Um, so I had the hotel booked already. I feel like my camera's sliding just a little bit here. Um, I had the hotel booked and, and I just, I got there about 9.30 and I just decided to skip that last door. I think they're open till 10, but I was going to do that one first thing in the morning. Wake up, it's pouring rain, thunder, lightning. <laughs> got my son and we did hit, hit up Kohl's. And then as I was driving over there, I saw that store dirt cheap. And I've heard people talking about it before saying, you know, sometimes you can get stuff there and sometimes not. And I was really curious so we turned around and went into the dirt cheap and I will, I did just a little bit of video in there and I'll make another video on that. But I would say it's basically a total liquidation store. And I mean, they have toys in there that literally have a sticker on them that say salvage and they do have shelving in some areas. And then other areas are literally just piles of toys or bedding or, um, they did have outside that Paz Easter egg dye stuff. They had two Gaylords of them. I mean, they were about half full, uh, but you almost would have had to dive into them <laughs> to get them, but they were five cents a piece. So there was probably money to be made, you know. I don't know who would buy like lots of that, but I mean, cause I can't see you selling like $3 at a time, one, you know, one on eBay, but you know, I don't know if somebody would buy 10 and you could sell them for $10. I mean, that, that only cost you 50 cents. So I'm not sure. So there's a, a bolo for you. If you want to go find the pause egg dye at dirt cheap. And I don't know if people buy them outside of Easter time anyway. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. So I only spent about 15 minutes in there, but I took a little bit of video and just walked around and the music was really loud in there. So I'll have to talk I have to learn how to do that, but I'll have to kind of, um, you know, do a voiceover on that one. I see the button for it. I'll just have to figure that out. So yeah, we, we left there, we got gas and I saw a donut shop next door. My son loves donuts. So I was going to get coffee at Dunkin' Donuts and we pulled up and I rolled my window down. No, I don't have to roll it. I pushed the button and rolled the window down, got my coffee and pull forward and go to roll my window up and it won't roll up. I was like, oh crap. So we pulled into a parking space and I said to my son, you know, you try to pull it while I, I thought if we could just get it up for the trip, because we now have five and a half hours to drive home and my list of stores to hit on the way back. So we could not get it up. It would go about three quarters of the way up and then it would pull itself back down. And I was like, okay, it needs to go back that way a little bit. So pull that direction. And we never could get it up more than probably, I guess, two thirds. And, you know, the rain was about to start again, and <clears throat> we were driving down this, uh, I think it's called Nine Mile Road or whatever, and there was a lot of tire shops and stuff, but I was looking, like, for a a car shop, and we pulled into one, and I asked the guy, and he said, either it's going to come, you know, either I'll be able to get it up or I won't. So he did the same thing we did. He kind of pulled on it, and he said no, and he's like, you know, if you want to wait, my technician's really good at this. We can get it fixed today, and... I mean, he, but there was other people in front of us and I had no idea how much he was going to charge me. And you know how much I love my mechanic that's just down the street. So we just decided to stop 
I went into Ace Hardware. They didn't have any clear plastic bags. I went into Winn-Dixie and paid $10 for a bag of recycled plastic bags. Luckily, I had my three-inch tape. So we're like drying the, the window with napkins and taping. And I did the first one. I get in the car and I go to start to drive off. And it's like, this will not work. I cannot see out my, uh, I can't see my mirror. I did it like too far down. So we took it all off and started over again. And then if I just went like that a little bit, I could see real good out my mirror. So I was like, okay, we're good. Then we start to drive and it is so loud. I had no idea how much that little piece of glass blocks out that much noise. And of course I had forgotten my headphones. So we stopped at about an hour later. I knew there was this truck stop. We stopped at the Love's truck stop and $59 because my mine is the cell phone that needs the lightning cable uh, headphones. I was like, no, nope, can't do it. So I drove about another hour, went into the Walmart and they had one left, $29. And I really didn't want to spend the money on it because I have two or three at home, but I just couldn't listen to that noise all the way home. So don't tell Jared, but it's going to be an office supply because <laughs> I was on a business trip. So I, yeah, anyway, put the headphones in. Of course, then I'm listening to my book on tape louder than the noise outside. But, you know, even when we stopped at Chick-fil-A, for lunch, I strategically stopped at that Chick-fil-A because I knew there's a Tuesday morning right behind it. So while my son was waiting on the food, I was like, I'll be right back. And I, I only spent four and a half, five minutes in there. And I found eight items, which brought $15 return after my, after fees and everything. So 150 minus uh, 30, $120. So I made $120 in five minutes but then I had to wait in line about three or four minutes to pay and I did not take the time to use my tax exempt it was like okay gotta hurry because my food's probably done and he's wondering what the heck I'm doing but I say this to say turn every trip into a business trip I mean I didn't just I didn't just go there and pop into one store and say that it was a business trip I shopped all the way down and all the way home and I did fill up the RAV and I hit one Okay, so I had strategically, I knew which stores I was going to stop at on the way there. And I knew what I was looking for, except there's one really out of the way Walmart that's gigantic. And I went there a couple years back and did really, really well there. So I thought, I'm going to give that one a shot. And I really did. I mean, I, I, I had an overflowing cart. So I did a cool thing there. So I, I remembered that they had some boxes for 25 cents on on clearance. I don't know if it's every Walmart or not, but they kind of have their own boxes, their own brand of boxes. And I had heard that some of them are going on sale. So I went into, uh, so I ran past the boxes and they had the small box for 25 cents. And then I got a couple medium boxes. And I said to the lady up front, can I leave my cart right here for a minute? Amazingly, it was 730 on a Thursday night and it was very quiet in there. There was not one person at the register when I went up to the front. And so I just said to her, can I park my, my cart right here? Because I have tape in the car and I'm going to tape up these boxes. <laughs> so you're like, sure, no problem. So then I came back in. I paid for my boxes and a couple little items I had bought for myself because that wasn't tax exempt. And then I taped up my boxes. I did let a couple people go because they... Um, I actually ended up... Because now I'm... I'm like past where you, you pay with my stuff and my boxes. So I left my boxes there and I went around and got in line there because there was two people that came up to the line and they just had a couple things. So I went around behind them and, and as she rang me up, I just started, um, filling up the boxes. So I got two grocery carts, piled up all my boxes in there and wheeled them out to the car and it was sprinkling a little bit. So I didn't have to take my time to put everything in trash bags and all that. So I brought them out to the car, piled them all up. It was terrific because they were just ready to go when I got home, ready to take them back in the house. So that was one stop that I wasn't sure what I was going to be able to get. And, you know, I might have gotten $200 there, but I got probably over $1,000 in profit just at that one store. And I, I mean some really, really good stuff. Um, it just probably goes to show you that a reseller hadn't been in there for a while. Now, I did start out in the clearance aisle, and... 
I got some stuff and it was like, oh, they have the big stickers on them and I don't know if I really want this stuff or not, but you know, I threw it in the cart and I actually put a few things back and then I, I, I went, you know, just through the regular departments and got, got a bunch of good stuff. So that worked out really well. Um, yeah, so I mean, I honestly don't even go to a grocery store. Uh, my husband sends me to the grocery store for six items. He could be waiting outside in the car. And he'll say to me, what took you so long? Oh, the checkout was really long. <laughs> but I never go into a Publix and don't check the clearance. I mean, it's usually one little rack. And if there's things there that I haven't checked before, or a lot of times it's wine, and obviously I don't check that. I'm um, trying to think of some other categories I might not check. I don't think I've ever found a good kitchen item there but wow like some of the sweetener products like I found this agave liquid one time like an agave sweetener and I made I only found like six of them and I looked at all the other Publixes I have a feeling somebody might have special ordered that and then they didn't buy them all or something but I made really good money in those I've made really good money on some protein powders um, you know, just, just check everything when you're in the grocery store. Like I said, I, I mean, my husband will say, do you want to go to the bookstore? Sure. I mean, I check convenience stores, you know, I, not necessarily like the, the regular ones right around here, like the Shell gas station one or whatever, but you know, ones that are regional again, like the Wawa or Sheets. I actually, I actually didn't have a chance to go into the Sheets this time. Um, on my trip. So many stores, so little time. But I guess what I'm saying is, you know, when you ask how can you make money doing the Travel RA, it's because you already know the stores that you're looking for. You already know the product that you're looking for. You have a plan in place before you go. And then there are just specific stores that you know, like the back of your hand, and that can fill in when you're not actually finding, you know, enough of the items. Now, if I'm going out there for the wholesale club, I will go into a store here and ask them to look up or call out there. But a lot of stores, you know, you can say, do you, you know, can you look this up and see if any of the other stores near here have any? And they might say no. And then I'll say, well, can you check Charlotte for me? Sometimes you have to know the zip code or sometimes they can just look it up. But, you know, that's one way right there. You could always do, you know, Brick Seek. If it's at like a Lowe's, you can, or a Target, you can order ahead of time for pickup. And you've got three or four days to pick up. So you could do, you know, order a whole bunch of stuff at Target in a city that you're headed to and have it ready for pickup when you get there. Sorry, the sun is kind of fading and, um, and making the lighting not so good, but I'm going to finish up quick here. So those are the ways that you can make money doing RA. And really, you can, I mean, I would sleep in my car in a Walmart parking lot if I was not a, an old lady, you know, at night all by myself. If my husband would come with me, I'm not sure he would sleep in a Walmart parking lot, but maybe one of my kids. Um, when I am sourcing with my sons, I tend to source a lot later at night. I uh, even, one of my sons, my oldest son, who does this full-time for a living, he'll be like, come on, mom, let's go back to the hotel. And I'm like, no, there's one more Walmart on the way home. But, um, yeah, we've gotten into trouble. He takes me every year for my birthday for a week sourcing out of town. And we usually say, that, like last year, we said we were going to spend one whole day during doing, um, you know, touristy kind of stuff. And we literally were packing in the parking lot of a UPS store, no, a UPS customer service center near the airport on the way to the airport. <laughs> so we tend to kind of go crazy and buy a lot of stuff and need to do a lot of packing because like that trip, I flew there. The year before that, we went to Orlando and I drove, so I was able to take some stuff home. And I have a crazy story from that trip, but I'll save that for another time. Anyway, um, yeah, by knowing stores, by knowing what you look for, by planning ahead and making sure, you know, if you don't have that much capital, you might want to stay closer to home or just do day trips. But if you, you know, know that you can get a large amount, large quantity of items, 
plan ahead, make sure there's at least something that you can get there. Like I, I wouldn't really have gone even on the Virginia trip unless I knew there was some other stores. Because those stores that I was going to specifically for, I really didn't know what I would get or how much I would get. But I already knew that I was stopping at Kohl's and the wholesale clubs and, you know, doing some other things that I knew would bring money. And I also knew I really didn't, if I had gone in the first day, I really wasn't doing that well. I would have just planned that, you know, turned around and started doing my stores for on the way home. So that's another reason that you have to be flexible because you never know, you know, your window might get stuck and you have to buy plastic bags. <laughs> Okay, you can add $10 to the cost of my trip going down to Pensacola and $29 for headphones. Don't leave home without headphones. I, I never do, but, you know, the day I really needed them, I did. I also always carry trash bags in my car because I wrap things if it's raining when I come out of a store and I've been sourcing. You know, I'll, I'll wrap everything in trash bags. But they were black, and I wouldn't be able to see while I was driving, so I really had to buy the clear ones. I guess now that'll add to my what to keep in the car, some clear trash bags. Um, yeah, so, you know, you can do it as cheaply as you can by, you know, taking the quickest route that you can, by staying at less expensive hotels. I mean, I stayed at Microtel on the way there and I stayed at a Best Western on the way back, which both were, I think, under $70. Then there's the taxes and, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, you can stay pretty reasonable or you could camp. You really could. You could, you could go to a campground and sleep in your car. I mean, I did that when I was younger. Um, then you've got bathroom and a shower available. There's always truck stop you could shower at. I mean, if you really wanted to travel and you really didn't have that much money, there are just ways that you could do it pretty inexpensively. Carry your own food, carry bottled water, or just, you know, save your bottles and fill it up. Um, peanut butter sandwiches, I mean, it's, you can do it pretty cheaply. But I wouldn't just jump in the car and decide, hey, I think I'll drive five states away and see what I can find. I think I would do it more... Uh, make sure that there's something that you're gonna have to bring home. Okay, got interrupted with a phone call, so I turned a little so you can see me a little bit better. Um, so I just was really wrapping up. You know, you can travel pretty inexpensively, um, but I would I would plan on knowing at least some product that you'll be able to buy um, that's making you know making money. So. You know, it's not necessarily for the a total new person. I don't think I would drive a few states away and just go scanning things. I guess I said that already, but, you know, uh, just have a plan, basically. Um, and, I mean, I can do the numbers for you someday. Yesterday I spent on the hotel. We did eat at Chick-fil-A on the way home. Two tanks of gas. I mean, if I say $170, that, that's probably more than I actually spent, but let's just say $175. I know for sure that one store I got over $1,000 worth. And I would say between all the other stores, conservatively, I probably got another $1,000 worth. Now, I will say that the Virginia trip was not as good. I, I, I know I, I've put into Inventory Lab so far $3,200. Um, and I have one box left of really small, um, I don't know how to describe what they are. It's not toys and it's not clothes. So I haven't done those yet and it's something that I don't normally um, buy that much of. So I would conservatively guess $500 in that box. So if, let's just say my total would be $3,700, but I did spend $700 on that trip between hotels. I did, you know, splurge and stay at the beach the one night, but I did use half points for that. But then the next two nights, even though I think I used points for half of it one night, but then that third night, the second night I stayed at that same hotel that was brand new, it went up like $30 and from the weekday because it was then Friday night that I was staying there. And I almost didn't, and it was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and spend it. Um, so I, I could have spent less, um, but it was a long trip. It was, like I said, a, 
uh, I don't really remember the miles, but when I mapped it out, it was going to be nine and a half hours one way. And then I did travel quite a bit all those days driving round and round. So, you know, I made 30, let's just say I made 3,200, no, let's see, 3,700, but I spent 700. And to me, I probably could have made that, that, you know, closer to home and spent less. But I, you know, I enjoyed it. It was something a little bit different. And I feel like if I just hadn't tried it, that I've always would have wondered, I wonder how much I could have got before those stores changed over to the new stores, you know. So it is what it is. Sometimes you'll make more, sometimes you'll make less. Um, so, you know, if you have any specific questions about travel, all right, I've been doing it quite a while. I would say this is like my second full year doing it. And I, I could just tell you stories about the Toys R Us, which I, I actually may do a, a talk about that, just on a chain going out of business. So the, the very beginning Toys R Us was going to close 80-something stores. And to me, that was the better, um, the better deals that I was finding. And again, I'll just do a whole video about that and talk about it, because it was a pretty interesting time. But I went to 38 stores in total. And I didn't realize how many I had been to, and then somebody in the green room said, hey, how many Toys R Us has everybody gone to? And I actually added them up, and I was pretty surprised. Um, but I did really, really well there for months and months. And I'm still trying to recover, you know, my my numbers from during that time. I'm having a really difficult time keeping up with my numbers for last year because it was just, it was, I can't think of that, uh, like some funny saying how easy it was to just go to those stores. Now, I had been shopping at Toys R Us every week for a whole year before that. So, you know, I, I really knew that store well too. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this before the sun's totally down and kind of edit these together and send it off. And we will talk to you again when I think of another topic. Bye-bye. Like, share, and subscribe if you will. Thanks so much. And I really appreciate all the nice comments. Thank you again. Talk to you soon.